Kia ora and welcome to the Have to Crew shows. This is your host Helen Brahms coming to you live from San Diego, California. And we're just having some technical fun right now because we have a fabulous guest on today. And Jennifer, can you hear me? Okay, we don't have Jennifer on the phone yet, but that's okay. As soon as she's able to, she will join us. And we will be able to... Um, chat with her about travel and the 12 step um oh my gosh i've totally forgotten what it's called the 12 step roadmap that she has um so while we're waiting for jennifer to to find us online um we will continue talking about some great things i just up oh, there's jennifer on the google hangout hello miss Helen. hello can you hear me on the phone nope nope Oh, I hear myself, myself through, my, through own my own ears. ears. <laughs> yourself through your own ears. <laughs> but I don't hear I you. Thank God I can see you. Most of, um, let's see. What about hanging up on the phone and trying to dial back in and see if that helps? <laughs> oh, my not, I don't know what I just said. <laughs> I think I should hang up and call back. Yeah. You're fine on the Perfect. Google Hangout, but, we're, but it's, the, okay. it's the radio oh. side that we can't hear you on. <laughs> oh, my God. No. But that's okay. So while waiting for Jennifer to call back in, next week we're going to have an exciting show. We're going to be talking about the brand new Royal Princess, which I just got off yesterday after having a beautiful two-day inaugural sailing on her. So um, she's a beautiful ship, so you'll find out more about that next week. And last week I was also at Cruise Planners Annual Convention and got to meet with some fabulous um with some fabulous new vendors and things, so we're going to be looking at getting them on the show. So keep an eye out for that coming up because we're going to have some great stuff coming up there as well. And for now, we have suspended the travel um, deals program because I'm doing a lot of traveling right now. But there's more exciting stuff to come, so you'll have to wait and find out what that's going to be. And, um, and let's see who else we have coming up. Um, oh, and you'll have to join us on November the 20th. Yes, November the 20th because we're going to have the fabulous Molly Burke on doing Traveling with Confidence, and we're going to have Adrian Ashley joining us that day as well. So um, we will be able to enjoy that too, and that is going to be a fabulous show. Um, and what else can we tell you right now? Oh, there's a lot. Oh, there's so much good things. But keep an eye on our Facebook page because there'll be a lot of good stuff coming out on there. There is, um, for those of you who are in the LA area and want to join Brad and I, on November 22nd, we are going to be sailing on the Carnival Inspiration for three nights. So if you want to join us, send me a message on Facebook, and you will be able to join us on that. And like I said, I was just waiting on Miss Jennifer to join us back on the phone, and then we'll be talking with to her about the 12-step roadmap. And um, also about some interesting things about Jennifer, too. She does a lot of traveling as well, so she may have some great travel tips for our um, for you about how she copes with all the traveling that she does. And she's on the road a lot. And she's an amazing, incredible woman. She's also a single mum as well. So if you single mums out there who think you can't travel and work, then Jennifer's going to remove some of those excuses for you. So we are looking forward to having her talk to us about that as well. Um, so what else could we talk about? Um, let's see. Where else have I been lately? <laughs> Okay, let's see if we've got Jennifer on the phone now. Are you there, Jennifer? I am. Can you hear me? Woohoo! Yes, we can. Fantastic. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad technology was on my side this time. <laughs> I am glad too, and I am very excited to have you on the show with us today too. And as I was just telling the listeners, you probably heard through the Google Hangout that we're going to be talking about your 12-step roadmap as well as how you're a single mum who works and travels at the same time because um, I know we have a lot of single mums out there who um, are working and wondering how to balance everything and you seem to have that down to a fine art. You know what, it, it's interesting, Some sometimes people say that I've learned this but actually my entire lifestyle is, I'm going to say, planned and by design. I love to travel. You know I love to travel. Have you seen me mm -hmm. on cruise ships? I light up. I'm so excited. I just I love it. And to me, 
you know, everything in business, all of the decisions I make in business and life and love and my home and my the way that I function, the way that I operate, it is literally designed so that I have the capability, the flexibility to run a mobile business. And that that mm-hmm. need and that desire is 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 in in my estimation, Helen, you and I we have right, this is our lifespan. We have from here to here that we've already yep. used up. We throw that away. Right. We have from <laughs> here to retirement that we have to figure out how to get it right. And then we have this, I want to enjoy the rest of my life, which is this little sliver over here. So my thought process is I want to prepare myself for the little sliver over here by actually doing those right things now that are going to get me to a position where when I am in a position to fully retire, I have the ability, the capability, I'm familiar with the process, and I've designed a lifestyle that works like that. And it, I mean... I will tell you, travel means everything to me. It's, it warms my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know that feeling very well. <laughs> that's why that's one thing reason that I love doing what I do because I get to do all of this traveling with it and um, I get to bring those experiences to my clients to help them with, um, with their traveling abilities and everything else as well. So um, I totally get that. Try and... and in this day and age, trying to have a mobile business can be a headache for some people, but for others, it's a very easy thing to have. So for those that are struggling a little bit with wanting to have a mobile business, what's some of the suggestions that you have to help them make their business a little more mobile so they have that flexibility to go traveling when they want to? Well, I'm, it, that's a big, big, big question, right? It, that's a huge question because it starts with what are the products and services you're delivering? What is the client base you're catering to? You know, are you selling bells and widgets? What is your digital infrastructure to be able to take whatever product or service you have to market? How are you going to manage and run your business? Are you designing a business that requires your self-involvement? Are you trading time for money? You know, there's, there's, that is such a huge question. You started off with this monster. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a way to solve that because you have this fabulous 12-step roadmap that helps people figure out what their business is and everything else. So, yes, it may be a big question, but you have a great product that's just come out, the 12-step roadmap that helps people decide that and helps them find that that extra time that they need for travel, correct? You are you are a better salesperson than I am. <laughs> you are. Yes. <laughs> you are absolutely hired. That's funny. I mean, it it is first and foremost, you know, I tell people that everything really falls into four categories. Do you have the right technology, which is your infrastructure? Do you have the right strategy? Do you have the right network? And do you have the right mindset and behavior? And I I say it over and over again, and I'm going to keep saying it until it really, really sinks in because those four things are critical. I watch you literally implement each one of those areas. I've, I've mm-hmm. watched you over the years blossom and grow into a freaking powerhouse, which I love. And it, it, like, I'm, I'm happy about that because I've seen you implement those things. It, you know, really that's, that's the beginning is, is identifying what kind of technical infrastructure do you have. So if you have a business, what kind of technology you're operating? Do you have the proper website? Do you have an integrated blog? Do you have the right social media platforms? Are you automating the majority of your work? Are you requiring labor to, labor to do that? Are you offshoring your labor, or are you, you know, do you have um, staff that you have to manage and payrolls? Are you 1099 mm-hmm. people? Or are you hiring a bunch of W twos? There's so many variables to it. So, the 12 step roadmap really is designed, if coupled with the training program and the coaching program, to be able to help people identify. And and I will tell you. The, the beginning, step one, is coaching and strategy and implementation. That is just step mm-hmm. one. And that yep. right there is, is critical because the first thing you have to have is somebody who has been further than you wish to travel. I really like that plug. Mm-hmm. Further than you wish to <laughs> travel. <laughs> <laughs> be able to evaluate what you're doing, where you're going, and how you're going to get there. And be able to really, really, really push you up against the wall and see if that is going to work. And that, that is first and foremost. I have mentors in my life that give me a tail whooping on a regular basis, full on like I'm four, and walked out in the middle of a parking lot. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
so what's so how does somebody find out about this program and um, some of the steps that they need to go through to prepare for them to be to be able to start this this roadmap journey because it is a phenomenal program and I was at the presentation that you did a couple of weeks or even a week and a half ago jeepers time flies where, where? Um, where I first heard about that <laughs> and um, so how do they go about finding out about the program and what it's and what is it going to do to help their business well um, you cannot get from point A to point B without a map if if I if mm -hmm. you were to call me and you were to say to Jen I'm lost I'm the first question that's going to come out of my mouth is what? Where are you? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I cannot help you unless I know where you are. <laughs> so a lot of times you see business owners, they go to these presentations and speakers and everything else, and they're listening to this plan and what to do and how to do it and everything else, and they forgot the number one thing that matters, which is a speaker or a presenter or a trainer or a guide or a coach cannot help you get where you need to know, be unless they know where you already are. So there has mm -hmm. to be a conversation. So first things first, um, you guys can go to 12steproadmap.com. That's the simple piece. We are so transparent with our business model. We designed the model. It's out there. You guys have access to the PowerPoint presentation, which Casey, my business partner, and I um, deliver on a regular basis. Uh, it has the 12 steps outlined. It has um, a 12-step roadmap guide, which takes you through to let you evaluate yourself at each individual phase and really determine do you have the right infrastructure but as I said there's there's still those four areas in in, in mind so can you go to 12steproadmap.com and just call it call it a day and you got what you need to get going no because everything starts with do you have clarity in where you want mm -hmm. why, the why behind you do what you do what do you ultimately want in life what do you want your life to look like not your business your life and that yep. is I think that's a that's a big difference in why we get to do what we get to do is because when we planned our business it didn't start with what do I want my business to look like it started with what do I want my life to look like and then we exactly. work backwards so the first thing is do you have clarity once you have clarity and hopefully you get some help getting there because you need to be asked some really tough questions then you're gonna have the ability to focus when you're in that focus stage now you can look at the 12-step roadmap now you can start figuring out all right, I have clarity on the direction where I'm at, how I'm going to get there. I have clarity on what ultimately this big picture looks like, what I want as a lifestyle for my family, my loved ones, my friends, my network, my customers, my, my bank account. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Got to have that one sorted out because that's the one that helps us get to where we want to be <laughs> and helps us with that extra yeah. travel that we want to do. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, a lot of times I hear people talk about, well, the financials first. Trust me, I'm in when it comes to dollars and cents. I get the fact that that is money is as great as your need for air. I believe it. Yep. I'm in. <laughs> 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 however, however, if you don't have clarity, you can wind up literally creating a business model that prevents you from getting the financial freedom you need in order to do the things you want to do, and it requires mm -hmm. a a extreme coming to Jesus meeting with yourself and somebody who who is the most practical pragmatic business minded and experienced analyst to be able to really really grind um, into you know what, what your plan is what do you want and everything else in order to get there so that's first that's first that's first and there's some videos on there too you can you can watch some of the presentations <laughs> I'm gonna have to from anywhere some of those presentations. <laughs> But there's, but there's nothing like having Jennifer present this in person. It's, a, it's an amazing thing, and you really do have to have your ears listening and tuned in because you can talk rather fast. <laughs> <laughs> but you're like me. When you're excited about something, you tend to. I have to very. When I, I have to be very conscious that when I get excited about something, as I talk very fast and my accent becomes very more pronounced, and people are sort of like, I have no idea what you said, but it sounded great. <laughs> Yep, that's, you know what, and I have been with you when you've got into that mode, and I remember literally sitting back going, hmm, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> you had no idea what I was selling, but you were... <laughs> not a damn soul, not, no clue. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, but you ended up on a fabulous cruise out of it. <laughs> I, I know I said I'm in, and I gave you 16 digits in an expiration date, in a matter of like 30 seconds, and then it was like three months when I, I came back, and I was like, what am I doing? When am I going? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I'm in. But we did have a, 
Now, for those of you who don't know, Jennifer was on our Promote Your Passion cruise that took place in December of last year, and she was also, her and Casey got up, and you've all met Casey before on our previous shows, he's been on a couple of times, and um, they were um, two of our dynamic speakers that were on the ship with us presenting, but we had some amazing speakers that were speaking, and Jennifer and Casey were just two of those amazing speakers, and uh, it was a fabulous time, got to learn a lot got to know Jennifer a lot and uh, so Jennifer this was probably I think was your first time talking at C2 and we were on the ship in December so how was that for you? Well I'm actually that was my that was my second time speaking on a cruise ship okay and um, there is hands down no better job than getting hired to be a speaker on a seven day cruise baby <laughs> <laughs> I am blessed, blessed, blessed. I can't even, I'm in. So, <laughs> the, you know, the interesting part is, and I have to get real serious, and you're doing an awesome job about telling people what I do, but I have to stop for just a minute and tell people about you. Your, your business and what you do, I need, I need anyone who is watching this to seriously, seriously think about how to leverage time and how to convert time to cash. So when you mm -hmm. think about how you run a business and you think about the fact that you're on the phone doing hustles and trying to get new clients in the door and you have a customer base over here and you're trying to hustle new clients over here, let me just explain that if you were to invest the time into doing a cruise, a seven-day outing or a five-day outing or a three-day outing or a four-day outing or, or do it like me, ten days, and you were to invite your best customers and ask them to each bring somebody, and you were to do a mastermind, or you were to do an ongoing a, a four-day training program, and you were to wrap it around a cruise, wrap it around a, 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 a it doesn't even have to be a cruise. You, you can rent your own your own boats, you can rent your own ships, you can have your own flotillas, you can do, there's so many things you can do, but I will tell you, you will make more money hand over fist investing seven days into a trip with a group of top prospects, top customers, top referral partners, top mm -hmm. referral sources, hands down, you will knock it out of the freaking ballpark. If you spend six days with them, seven days with them, and invest in building a relationship, having a good time, laughing, the comedy shows, the comedy clubs, the, the musicals, the, the events, the dinners, the camaraderie, what you can do in a seven day time period, you couldn't pay a hundred grand for two customer service reps to spend their time trying to re-engage customers, reactivate customers, generate more referrals, ensure your customers are satisfied, build relationships with your customers. All that is a joke compared to the relationships you can build over three glasses of wine and filet mignon and some some awesome, awesome, awesome salad and like 19 desserts and pants that won't buckle. <laughs> so. <laughs> I like the 19 desserts. <laughs> I totally just sat there thinking about creme brulee, and, and then I was, oh, I can't even tell you what ran through my mind during that. The 19 desserts <laughs> threw me off, but so. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing I like about cruises, too, is that it's a captured audience, because, um, you know, you're on these cruise ships. Yes, they are spacious and all that, but you're confined. You can't use your cell phones. You can't get mm -hmm. pulled out of meetings. Um, internet yep. costs you an arm and a leg on a cruise ship, so you really don't want to be online for that long. So you really have nothing yep. to do, and because you're on the ship, you're bound to run into people who are, in the, who are in the meetings with you as well, and they'll go, and you're sitting out there by the pool and go, where were you this morning? So now you've got that accountability factor, and uh, you know so that, makes it, that makes it kind is? of cool. Spousal relationship building. If the oh, husband absolutely. is in business with or vice versa, and the spouse, the husband or the wife, doesn't matter, and the spouse is on board, or even better yet, if the kids are on board, which <laughs> if you're a kid, and it depends on your business, you can throw this one out with the bathwater, it doesn't matter, but if you build a relationship with the spouse, it's game over. It's game mm -hmm. over as long as you deliver a quality product or service. That relationship, the fact that they're laying in bed talking about you or talking about you at the dinner table, that is... That is more valuable than anything under the sun. Now you have a twofer, you have a team, a tag team, that's constantly thinking about 
referring you new business, reutilizing your businesses, calling you up to see if you have additional products or services. You bring something to the table, you have a new product. Three, the, your number one source of new business should always come from existing customers. It should be in three ways. Now, number one, reactivation. Reactivation means you have an existing customer, you're able to bring a new product or service. Number two is retention. Keep them. It's a hell of a lot easier to keep a customer happy and keep yep. them than it is to go find a new one. And the third one is referral generation. Those are three R's. So, so I'm, I'm, I am with you, and this is not a sales pitch. This is a business, a, a strategic business decision that every business owner must, if they want a, a lifestyle business, if they don't want to work as hard to make money, then they need to be considering on an annual or, or, or twice a year, they need to consider being able to organize, coordinate any event where they have their customers, strategic partners, referral sources, and top prospects in a confined area. And the best way to do that is a vacation. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything about the fact that if you do it right, you can totally have your vacation paid for for you and your family. I'm not going to mention that because that would, that would be almost unethical. It's true, but I'm... I'm <laughs> they just mentioned it anyway. <laughs> so, so when I talked in the beginning, I said clarity is what do you want in life? And if your yes. life includes family vacations... The easiest way to get a family vacation is to be able to make a little bit of money while you're on the trip and have your trip paid for. This is a this is a hands down no brainer strategic move in everyone's business. That's that's me. That's where I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> and but the other thing is too is that it, it brings to light that people are not taking vacations these days. And here you are, you're a single mom, you're a working mom, and you're out there, you're making it happen, you're doing the work, you're able to um, raise Terrell very successfully, and you're getting all this travel in as well, and people are just sort of like, wow, how do you get that work-life balance going? I take three to five vacations a year and half for the last seven years. Three to five. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 and yes. Because it's, it's, not, even, it's not even a work-life balance. It's... If, if you plan it right, if you think about what you're doing, one supports the other. And if you combine them, if, if so, so if somebody was to tell me, if, if I said, you have an option, you either don't take vacations because you can't afford to take off, or B, you take a vacation, it's a seven day vacation, but two days you're working. Mm -hmm. Which do you pick? If people thought smarter and more strategically about that, it would be, well, I'm going to take a seven-day vacation, but I'm going to let my family know if we're going to leave for seven days, two of the days I'm going to be working. And a few dinners and evenings, you might have to meet some of my customers. And you can plan, my, like I said, um, training programs, uh, uh, networking events, um, client appreciation events, um, team building events, strategic partnership events, mastermind events, and so forth. That is... That is how I travel. I mean, I may I travel a lot. I probably have, I don't even know how many, I don't know. In the last two months, I think I've been on like nine airplanes. I have no, no idea. And I drag my son with me over the weekend. I send him home. I drag him with me. I send him home. He's been to Jamaica. He's been to Belize. He's, by the time my son was in the third grade, they had a project at school where they took this piece of paper. And in the left-hand corner, it says, where have you been in your city? Where have you been in your state? Where have you been in the, in the United States and where have you been in the world? And I remember getting a phone call from the teacher and she said, I'm really disturbed about this project because your son was supposed to take it seriously and he didn't take it seriously. Because in the top left-hand corner, I think it said movies, bowling, and to eat. In the right-hand side, it says to Galveston to get on a cruise ship um, and the river walk and the Alamo, I think he said. And then in the left-hand corner, he had, like, it was squished and all sideways, and he was scribbling in. He had every major city in the United States. And then here he had, like, a, and he didn't go by country. He went by, like, islands. <laughs> so it was, like, <laughs> Grand Cayman, Little Cayman, and then it said Smallest Cayman, and it had a question mark. And it was all of the, you know, <laughs> all these things. And she was really disturbed with the fact that my son in the third or fourth grade, whatever it was, had all of these different places he's, he's been. And it, hurt, it almost hurt my soul when I went in to have a conference with her, and she was like, I know. No. 
So he's like, I don't, I don't travel. I don't understand this. And it yeah. is, yeah. you know, it's almost where we started in the beginning of this conversation when I said we have the life we've already spent, the life we have left before retirement, and then we have the rest. Yep. There's too much. And he's a beautiful world. <laughs> Here's an interesting fact, which um, now we were at Maurice Domino's um, million dollar mess million dollar message um, intensive okay. uh -huh. boot camp intensive whatever it was a couple of weeks ago yeah. or last week yeah and um, so the Wednesday beforehand at 4 a.m. in the morning I woke up and I had this inspiration that I had to go and rewrite my presentations that I had been working on that was related to um, taking events out of hotels and putting them on cruise ships. And my message was that people need to take vacations. They need them. And so then I know that there's figures out there and everything else, and I know it costs this country billions of dollars a year when people don't take leave that they've been given. So I was busy looking up for those statistics and stuff, and I came across one which really hit me hard, and now it's my new mission in life. And that is that $344 billion a year are spent on health related, sorry, on stress-related health care because people do not take vacations. And I'm, and I'm like sitting there and I'm thinking, I know, and I'm like thinking, okay, you got to take a vacation because it recharges the batteries, it helps you give you clarity, you become more productive, um, your health is improved, so you have to take less, less time off work and everything else, and I'm just thinking of all the benefits of the reason to take vacations, yet the same article, and it was, a Forbes, it was in, um, on, in Forbes, the same article was talking about um, that there's employers out there who discourage their employees from taking vacation and I'm like what are you kidding me and they've got people who are now taking who are um, they've now combined you don't know no longer have vacation and sick leave it's combined into paid time off and when you combine the two it's actually less time than they had if they had them separate but now people are not taking their paid time off when they get sick so they're coming to work making everybody else sick because they want to use that time for vacation which they're discouraged from taking so I'm sort of like, this is my new mission now, is to get out there and make sure people take vacations. And like you said, if you take a seven-day vacation and two of those days you're going to be working, at least you're getting a five-day break in there. And that is, yeah. and you know from having all those vacations that you take, you know, five to seven a year, how important that is to recharge your batteries and to get the ideas flowing and everything. Yes. So in addition to that, you know, you know what really... Um, what really kind of bothers me, that's only talking about the health impacts related to stress, mm -hmm. I promise you if they were to dig deeper, the impacts to our, and I'm, I'm not going to go into any kind of crazy drama here, but I'll just, the superficial view is going to be the impacts that that has on marriages, relationships, mm -hmm. and children, the relationships with your children. The I, I'm blessed. My parents have been married forever since they were 20. They have the most amazing relationship. I traveled. I went on vacations everywhere. I went on freaking like seven state road trips. I did every vacation. I went everywhere with them. They did vacations on their own. They told me, you know what? You're going to leave at 18, but my husband's going to be here forever. I'm sorry. We're out. And I'm totally cool with that as an adult. Mad when I was a child. However, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, um, that, I, I am I am a great, well-rounded, and well-traveled person with a mindset of, of a broader space, a bigger world, because of my parents, because mm -hmm. of the fact that they mandated family vacations. They And you know what? They didn't just mandate family vacations. They mandated family vacations, staycations, monthly staycations, even if it was a hotel down the street. They mandated it, but we had regular vacations my entire life growing up, and I know I'm very blessed to have that, but... But it doesn't matter if you're packing up, you know, for someone who feels like they can't afford it. A cruise ship is the cheapest way to vacation on the planet with the most amount of, in, the most amount of entertainment, the most amount of care that you don't have to plan anything, you don't have to think, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to drink and drive, you don't have, you need to drink. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. But you, you, you don't have to. Come on, I mean, that is, it is a ridiculously inexpensive way to not just vacation, build incredibly quality relationships with your, your children. Your children must have that. My son, it's the best time I have on the books with him. 
I, I mm -hmm. our our vacations I remember more than anything I remember riding that bobsled in Jamaica him and I we did a Canada one and we went down I'll tell you what zip lining in Canada they're telling you about the trees and had nature and the bugs and the ecosystem and recycling and they you know it's slow process now when you go to Jamaica and they push you off that thing and they say go and then like wait and they don't trim the shrubs totally cool experience <laughs> 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 yeah, <folks. laughs> Awesome. So that is, I mean, in Belize, we've been cave diving. We went in the canyons and, and stalactites and stalagmites, and my son knows all about this. The things that he remembers, when I look at what he learns in school versus what he learns on these trips with me, the trips with me have more relevance, more stickiness in his head, more of an experiential learning platform. I don't I don't know if you know, but my 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 ultimate life's goal outside of unlimited choices without restriction you know that's my number one mm -hmm. however yep. uh, my business the business I will eventually open up is I want a an educational system that is designed around traveling children designed around teaching children in the elements of, of other countries in the middle of a cave in the middle of a, another city another another Nothing that is time. I mean, 365. You're in school 365, and you have PTO time. That's your time off. We don't have spring break. We don't have Christmas break. Travel doesn't go up through the roof. You take off when you want to. But, but I love that. that. <laughs> I'm all about I taking kids on, on trips and, and teaching them new cultures and stuff. My parents, when we, when we were growing up, my um, two younger brothers and myself were literally dragged around the country, around New Zealand, showing us every nook and cranny there because they were the they were the minders. We will pay to show you your own country. If you want to go overseas, you pay your own way. And they every school vacation, we're getting dragged around the country. We had a caravan, which is like your camper trailers that you hook on the back of the car and off you go. And we were, yeah, we were all over the country. And there's only three very small areas of New Zealand I have not yet seen, but I have been 99% of that country, 95% of that country I have seen because my parents dragged us. And I remember us kids were kicking and screaming on some vacations we did not want to leave. Why do we have to go on vacation? Why can't we stay here and play with our friends? Especially as a um, teenager. <laughs> oh, yes. And especially when you're waiting for exam results to come out too because I remember being in, um, when I was, fifth, oh, the year I turned 15, no, I was 15 that year, we had the big national um, certification program called school certification and it's a, an exam you take at the end of that year and the results come out in January and I did not want to leave because I did not want to be gone when those results came in but what I didn't know is that my parents had actually left um, had somebody picking up the mail for them and looking for that envelope and calling them with the results um, while we were away on vacation I was yeah I was I was a little bitch that vacation <laughs> <laughs> But once I got my results, I was all happy and ready to go again. <laughs> it's, gosh, it's just, it's a requirement. It's a requirement. And I hope, Absolutely. I hope, I hope that people think about being able to set up their business and set their family up to be able to work from anywhere, to be able to have a mobile business to replace. If you have a business that's a local on the block business, that's fine. But you better figure out or get some coaching and strategic planning on how to get yourself out of that business. I believe that business owners did not go into business to be tied down to something that looks just like a job. I believe mm -hmm. that to be true. So if it is, if your ultimate goal for becoming a business owner is to have more time with your family, is to not have to report to the man or whatever you want to call it, is to be able to have flexibility and freedom, is to take more vacations a year, then let someone evaluate what you do, how you do it, why you do it, when you do it, and, and every in between. And put on your, your big girl, big boy pants and take a few tail whoopings and, and hurt feelings and get through the coaching that it requires to be able to set your business, your mindset, your technology, your strategy, your implementation, your team members, your network in place to be able to get this right. Because you are, you in, in my estimation as a parent, and as a spouse, a wife or a husband, it is your due diligence, it is your job, it is your duty to experience as much life as mm -hmm. possible while you're here. Period. It is your job to do that for your family, for you. It is your job to leave a legacy. It is your job to experience as much of this planet and this world as possible. And damn it, you better put things in place to be able to do that. And it is 
by design, with no plan, there's no action that's going to get you there. You have to have a plan. You got to have it. We call it a roadmap. You got to have a roadmap, and and it's doable. It is. It mm -hmm. is absolutely doable. I hear all of these. I hear so many excuses. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough resources. I don't have enough this. I have three kids. Um, whatever. I don't give a joy. So <laughs> want to say, don't give a shit. I'm not going to say that though. That's not what I'm going to say. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't care. I am a, I am. I have been in Texas now for almost 12 years. My son and I got here when he was three, almost four, and he's he's um, about to be 15. And um, I have no friends, no family, no one. I have no one here. I came here with nothing but a job. I was in the job for two years, left corporate because I was so single and I traveled so much that I could not, I traveled constantly when my son was young and it was all corporate trips. I got three days notice. I was gone for seven days at a time. My kid hit kindergarten, was playing soccer. I wasn't allowed to ask my employees to babysit and that was really hard so I quit. I've been self-employed now for, for 10 years and I have physically designed a lifestyle that warms my soul. It is good for my son. It is good for me. It is a healthy, 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 it's a healthy lifestyle. And I don't miss soccer games. I work from home. I don't go to an office. I mean, for me to be able to get to work, I have to walk from over there to over here. It's hard some days. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my commute is all of about 20 paces as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know what? There are some months, like the last month, where I'm on the road, and I'm on the road constantly. And and I bring him out, and, you know, he said he wanted to go to a Clippers game. So Casey and I were going to figure out how to get Clippers tickets and just take a jaunt out to L.A. for a 40 weekend. I mean, I, I just, um, this is a big, 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 Deal and a big decision, and I believe that everything you choose to do or choose not to do right now after watching this video, whatever day it is that you watch this video, is going to significantly impact the rest of your life. So the decisions you Absolutely. make now are a big deal. Yeah. I'm totally and being able to... <laughs> <laughs> that's okay because some people need somebody on a soapbox so that they can hear this message because it is people don't realize how important it is that one they have to take a break they have to get those breaks in their work within their I mean I have to take a break from my business I've decided after because tomorrow I'm off to LA to do another another workshop so when I get back from that next week I'm taking two days off I am gonna shut the phones off shut the email down and I'm gonna take me time just so I can recharge my batteries because I am wiped out. <laughs> I was at Marisa's boot camp. I was at Chris Planner's convention. Then we we're two days on the on the um, Royal Princess. I'm back today. I'm off to LA tomorrow. I'm at a workshop from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I get back home on Monday, and I'm deciding like, okay, Tuesday is going to be a catch-up day. Wednesday, Thursday, I'm taking it off. Although I will do my radio show on Wednesday, so don't forget, I will be here for that. But otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get a pedicure and a manicure. Find a massage therapist somewhere and go get a or a chiropractor and go get adjusted because I really need an adjustment. <laughs> I, I need that time. Life. I know I need that time to and I've got the type of business where I can do that. And if I have a client emergency, I will deal with that. But uh, you know, if if there's things that can wait, they can wait. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's having the flexibility in the business and I love that. That's what I love about my business is it's also mobile too. So wherever I go I just take my phone and I have my business with me. Mm-hmm. There's people a, need to find that. Yeah, I'm. I'm in. There's um one of my business coaches, Larson Andre. They they had me develop this roadmap for me, which um helped me kind of plan my time, like what you're talking about. And it was a four mm -hmm. square thing, so it had a cross in the middle, top left hand corner. I'm gonna see if I can get this from memory. It is important and urgent. Right hand corner is um urgent but not important. Lower left hand corner is important but not urgent, and the lower right hand corner is not important and not urgent. And for me, what what they required me to do is to go through my life, go through my day, and consistently put things into the right buckets: important and urgent, which um, uh, urgent but not important, important but not urgent, 
and not important, not urgent. So the first thing you do is make all the not important, not urgent ones, right? Everything. Sometimes it's checking email, Facebooking. You know, if you're not good at it and you don't make money at it, it might not be. It's it's not a less. Um, some meetings are like that. Um, doing one on ones with the wrong people. Some networking events are, mm -hmm. are you know are going to fit down here. A whole bunch of things that you do that are not considered high leverage activities. And then you have this corner over here, which up here, what you're going to notice is that important and urgent things, this is crisis mode. This is you yep. somewhere you didn't take care of the maintenance mode, which causes things to fall into crisis mode. Some mm -hmm. things you act like crisis, but they're not even important. So you overreact to everything, <laughs> whatever that is, right? So identifying what is in this, this lower quadrant, which is a maintenance mode, and the bottom right-hand quadrant, which is a, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. I know I've been asked to do it. I know somebody wants me to do it. That's fantastic. No. <laughs> okay, let me think about it. Yeah, no. So <laughs> when you have that, creating that map will help you figure out what are things that you consider high leverage activities. Once you understand what are the high leverage activities that are going to be able to get you um, closer to your goal, you're, you're in a different position. You, ha you have it nailed down. You got it. You know that that conference was important. You know the cruise planners convention was important. You know the, the, the trip. I came in to see me. That was, I was so happy to see you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You, you have it down. And you also know, you know what? I have the ability to shut down, turn everything off. And I'm going to say, because you run such a tight ship, be like that. So, okay, so <laughs> because you do, you don't have very many emergencies. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't live in crisis mode. You don't. I see you. You're calm, cool. You might do a lot in a, a short amount. Of time. You, do, you do. You do do a lot in a short amount of time, mm -hmm. right? more than the average human being. However, um, <laughs> I thought I did a lot of amount, a short amount of, of time until I met you. <laughs> Well, now it seems like I don't do a lot in a short amount of time. <laughs> we are we are superhero women, and I need you not to tell anybody. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now that you just broadcasted that to everybody. <laughs> I don't know what happened. There's so much stuff I said I wouldn't say today. It's just I don't know what happened. So <laughs> somebody needs to hear it. Yes, that is. Um, you know what the you know what the truth is. You and I are average. We just we're just mm -hmm. women. You know. Yep. I'm, oh, what we my, do, my we do it. Hurt. Hurt. I'm <laughs> got, got issues. <laughs> There's things wrong. This is not. You know what? I I I I I barely was a C student. I didn't go to college. I don't have some master degree. I got really good pick. Good good. Um, get. I really got good at picking great mentors. Try that one five times. You know, and I I have a personality that is is planned. My my reactions to life, my reactions to negativity, your reactions when somebody meets you and they say, hi Helen, how are you doing? What do you say? Super fantastic and sparkling, thank you. That's A, it's your brand. Got it, love it. However, B, it's a decision. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. You choose to be in that mood regardless of what happens. Regardless, I have never seen you not super fantastic and sparkling. Never. I've never seen you not that person. I have always seen you as that person. You that is a that is a decision. That is a choice. Mm -hmm. And part of that is going to impact your ability to be able to enjoy life, your ability to have a mobile business, your ability to be able to to work from anywhere, your ability to be able to connect with people who are like minded and who you surround yourself with. You, you like me. Smart. <laughs> We're good at this. That is, um, those are all part of this process. Those are all part of the things that allow you to live a life that, quite frankly, the nine billion, I don't know how many billion, and please don't ever repeat that stat as if it has any value, but however many people wake up like Groundhog's Day, get in their raggedy old cars, jump on that highway, sit in that freeway and drive back and forth an hour or two hours or however many hours of traffic, mm -hmm. hating their miserable jobs, not liking what they do, not taking vacation with their spouse upset with them and never actually fulfilled, their children don't have a great relationship with them. And I'm sorry to be a drain, but come on, this is 
everything you have is a result of what you choose. Good, bad, and indifferent. It's, it's, Absolutely. You make a lot Absolutely. of Absolutely. Yeah. And if you don't make the right choices, then you've only got yourself to blame for how things turn out. You can't, and the number of people that go around blaming other people for how their life has turned out just amazes me because it's a choice. And when, I, when I'm in the supermarket and things, or like checking out at a, at a store or something, and people ask me how I am, I always say super fantastic and sparkling, and they're expecting just good, fine, okay. And they get that answer, wow. and they're like, oh. And they're like, wow, I wish I could be like that. And I said, it's just a decision. It's just a I said, you just have to make the decision to be that way, and you will be. And that's what it is. And, and my favorite thing is they've got that poster that says, I want to be the type of woman that when my feet hits, hits the floor in the morning, the devil says, oh, crap, she's up. Yes, and, uh, Brad I says love that. Every that. Morning. <laughs> my little add-on is Brad says that every morning. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Helen Brahms, I freaking love you. You are such a, just a rock star woman. I absolutely love you. You just you light up a room when I see you. You light up people's lives. You convince people, and you 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 do your damnedest to convince people of of the opportunities they have available to them that are not difficult. And it I've seen you get so excited about a cruise and what you could do in this group, and we're going. We got we got a hundred people going, and we, I've seen you be at that state, and you have somebody sitting over there going, I can't. You don't have enough time. Freaking stop doing that. Yeah. Stop. That every time you say you can't, you make a decision not to. You absolutely can. <laughs> you can. And that is and not smart. And that, you know, my that personality of mine, those decisions came from Brad's cancer, from our journey with Brad's cancer when he had that back in 2008. And one of the things that woke us up was that life is very short. You don't have time to say, I can't do that because. So now when I meet people, my favorite thing, my favorite thing oh, this is my favorite thing to do. I meet somebody and they, they find out I'm from New Zealand and they're sort of like, oh, I absolutely love New Zealand. It's a gorgeous country. And I go, oh, when were you last there? And they go, oh, I've never been. And I'm like, well, when are you going? Oh, well, and then all the excuses come out and I go, and they go, well, I don't have enough money. I said, so we plan it for next year or plan it for the year out after that. And we can start making payments towards that. So I remove that obstacle for them. Well, I don't have the time. Now, okay. if you plan it for two, yeah. So if I plan it for, I said, well, if we plan it for next year or the following year, then we can, you know, you can put it into your calendar now, and you have the time. And people don't think like that. Um, I was did a radio show a couple of weeks ago talking about how travel can actually help enhance your business, how you can increase your business through va taking vacations, and how travel can help your business from the business perspective as well as from the personal perspective with vacations. And one of the things I said was, you know, you don't know what your plans are going to be for next year yet. You're starting to get stuff on the calendar for next year already. Why not put your vacation on the calendar now? Go in now, plan a three-day vacation here, plan a four-day vacation here, a five-day, a six-day, seven-day. Start planning, putting that on your calendar now. Go find where you want to go, put the deposits down, and you're done. On a cruise, you put your deposit down now. You don't have to pay till 60 to 90 days in advance, depending on which cruise line you're with, and your vacation's taken care of. You can make monthly payments if you want to. It's you know it's a no-brainer. And these people that keep putting in these excuses, and my big, my favorite excuse for the New Zealand one is, oh, it's such a long flight, and I go, it's an overnight flight. You get on the plane at night, you get, have a meal, you watch a movie, you go to sleep, you wake up, they give you breakfast, you land. <laughs> 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 or as I heard in New, Zealand, in, in New Zealand vacations this weekend, they were did one of the presentations at um, Cruise Planners Convention. Their description of the flight was, it's two meals, two movies, and a sleep. <laughs> Just one. Just one sleep. <laughs> yeah, two meals, two movies, and a sleep. <laughs> and you're there. Oh, I did, I'm, I I'm tired you. of excuses. When it comes to vacation, I'm tired of hearing the excuses. I really am. And I, I, I get upset with people who find excuses to not take a vacation and take care of themselves and have that quality time with their kids, have that quality time with their spouses. It, it, annoys, it annoys me, and I'm now on a mission to get people to take vacations. You and I are in extremely similar situations because I, am, mm -hmm. I, am, um, I meet with business owners to talk to them about putting the right technology, right infrastructure, and my, right marketing strategies in place in order to be able to become more operationally efficient, save time, and make more money so that they have the ability to remove themselves from business so they can take a freaking vacation. So, 
You and I exactly. have <laughs> not psycho. Just slightly passionate and a female. <laughs> so, <laughs> we 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 it it's it has you know what it's not even it's it's not even an excuse about vacation. It's excuses, 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 blame, 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 reasons, reasons, reasons. And until somebody really, really steps out and says, you know what, I'm going to take accountability for everything I have and I don't have. I'm going to take personal accountability for everything that I, that I have and I don't have. I'm going to take personal accountability for getting where I need to go. If I need a guide, great, get a guide. You got Helen? Call Helen. You want to know how to take a vacation? Call Helen. Call her today, not tomorrow. Don't wait till the next week. You watch the video. You listen to this video. You made it this far. <laughs> you didn't shut it off because I think I said a couple cuss words. Um, so if you make it that far, then <laughs> you call Helen. And you say, Helen, I want to go on a vacation. I don't know how to do it. I, and you don't say, Helen, I don't have enough money. You call and say, what is the easiest way to be able to get me on a vacation with a limited budget? <laughs> She's going to tell you how to do that. You, you have positive... Think when you make the statement, make the statement positive. You don't say, I don't have enough time. You say, um, in order to be able to go on a vacation where I can plan enough so I have enough time, what do you recommend? Mm -hmm. You don't say, I don't have enough money. You say, I would like to go on a vacation. What do we need to do to get there if I was able to afford $50 a month? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And she's going to give you a plan to give you a roadmap. And she, you don't have to do 12 steps with Helen. I think you do like two. <laughs> so it's... Pick a date and a payment plan. And <laughs> where are you gonna go? Three. Sorry. Okay, so <laughs> hers is easier. It it is you know, I, I had a conversation earlier this morning and I was talking I was talking about how the words that you choose create a belief and that belief creates a thought and that thought creates an action. And the challenge is is that the words people use actually are preventative words. They will prevent them from getting what they want. They will prevent them from getting where they want to go because it's such a negative spin on everything. I don't have enough time to be able to implement the right marketing plan. I don't have enough time to be able to do that. Absolutely that's not true. What do I need to change in order to be able to have more time? Because my guess is it's not that you don't have enough time, it's that you're misusing your time or don't know how to better leverage your time in order to be able to get what you want. It's a simple statement. It's just a a minor, minor change in the way that you phrase your, your language, how you speak, it creates it creates thoughts, and those thoughts create results. And it, it, it is, you know, start with that. Vacationing, creating a mobile business, creating a business, creating a, a, a position. So we have all these different stages, right? You have the ones who can't take a vacation. They think they can't take a vacation. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Then you have the ones who... Um, they, they're you know entrepreneurs, they have their own business and they believe that time and their, their relationship with their business prevents them from being able to do so. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Then you have then you have ones who do have I'm at home. So um, then you have ones who do have <laughs> at least I got rid of the kids. Okay, so <laughs> you um, you have ones that do have a business and they're like, well you know what, I have the time to be able to take a vacation, but I'm kind of fiending for more. And how can I make vacations be able to impact my business and help us make more money? Now you're thinking about strategically how do you plan multiple trips? How do you include other people? How do you have a payment plan with other people that allows you to fund your own vacation? Then you're thinking mm -hmm. about who do I invite on the vacation? Who do I have them invite on the vacation so that I can now have more referrals, more strategic partners, bigger relationships, and generate more business from people who I didn't already know. And it grows into, quite frankly, Mitsubishi, American Airlines. I can pick the, the, a, a large group of very large customers that hire me for consulting that it is their model to take an annual vacation as a group. They send their entire senior team. They send their entire strategic development team. They send all their area managers and their divisional managers. They go to Hawaii for 10 days. They bring in someone like me or Tony Jerry to go speak and to be able to do a motivational thing. They build camaraderie. They are more productive. They make better sales. Every major corporation I have worked for travels. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. Nordstrom, Fossil, Tommy Bahama. Those are the ones I've worked for and the ones I've been hired as consultants for. I don't know one that doesn't. I don't. Yeah, there's, there are some businesses out there that feel that they have to be in the office 24-7 in order to get their, their work done. And it's like, you know, you're going to bring yourself out. 
And my, my thought is, you know, do you want to choose when you're going to take a vacation or do you want to contribute to that $344 billion stress-related health care? You know, the, the choice is yours. Which choice are you going to make? And telling yeah. your boss that, hey, I'm, I'm entitled to vacation. I'm taking vacation for those employers out there who discourage people from taking vacations. Um, and there are, there are companies out there that discourage people from taking vacations. They frown upon it. They make it difficult for them to take a vacation. Oh, we need you in the office to do this. We need you to do that. Or, oh, well, while you're on vacation, can you, go, can you read this because you're going to be doing a presentation when you get back? Um, you know, that's, that's not a vacation. If you can turn around and say, okay, well, I'm going on vacation for five for seven days. I am unplugging for that seven days. Um, mm -hmm. you know, or you can turn around and say, okay, I'm going to be on vacation for seven days, but two of those, like you said, two of those days, it could be 30 minutes a day, I'm going to be working, and that's it. The rest of the time, I'm with my family. I'm with my spouse. You know, you've got to learn to prioritize. You know, is work more important or is family more important? Well... There's another little consideration that I think companies and individuals need to understand. We are a thousand days away from having an entirely new generation of people who do not think like these old hags. I don't mean to be mean. Yes. However, <laughs> we have a thousand <laughs> days from now where my son, and even worse from that, 3,000 days from now, a five-year-old or a two-year-old who grew up in a mobile environment, grew up in a digital environment, thinks mm -hmm. differently, they want to be mobile, they, they believe in online schooling, they believe in online education, they love to travel, they like to be mobile. Their communities are no longer designed in a neighborhood. They're not in a geographical location. When my son jumps on his Xbox, he has friends in New York, Chicago, LA, uh, Seattle. When he gets online, I'll be like, Terrell, why don't you go out and hang out with your friends? He's like, Mom, you're home alone. I have 19 people from around the nation online. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, <"Hey." laughs> like, he's like, I got Joe from DC. I mean, come on, what do you, mom? You should get a life. So, <laughs> he's like, can I sit with you guys? <laughs> well, we're down to the last that, couple of minutes, Jennifer. That's a big deal. What's some words? What's some word of wisdom in the last couple of minutes that you can pass on to our listeners about about you know that work life balance thing and getting out there and just doing it. I, I am get clarity as, as to what you want and then design and if you need help get a coach get a guide get a couple design a lifestyle a business a, a, a plan that's not overwhelming that's going to get you closer there and make it happen because it's absolutely available for anybody who's interested in making that transition Hopefully you get somebody that hurts your feelings through the process because you're going to have to have some reality checks. And, and love that. Love the fact that it's a difficult transition. If you, it, and, and walk away with this. If you don't like what you're getting, you have to change what you're doing. you got to do it right now. Absolutely. Don't wait another day. You're losing years every minute, every day, every hour. You're losing too much time to not making the decision you need to live a better life for you, for your family, for your children, for their children. And um, just make it happen. Single mom, I'm in. It's easy. It's not that difficult. It really isn't. Just takes a little bit of time and decision. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for being on our show today. I truly appreciate your time to come here and to help get this message across that people need to take vacations because it does help their business and everything else. And if you want to contact Jennifer or um, find out more about getting your vacations planned or anything else, there is a um, link on the episode page and also below the video that you just click on that, fill out that link, uh, fill out that information there, and Jennifer and I will get back to you. And also if you go to the 12steproadmap.com, there is also um, information there that you can get about the 12-step roadmap program and how that works and can help your business. So again, Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the show. I truly appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. By the way, all three of those things she just did are part of that 12-step program. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and until next week, heck on era.